Hello, people of God. You are welcome to Kingdom Salmon TV. We are independent people. We share content of our father and mentor, Apostle Joshua Selman, in order to help to build the body of Christ. As you listen, remain ever blessed. Thank you. Mighty things have happened. And every single time that has been here, we've had a wonderful time in the Holy Ghost. The wind is blowing right now. The anointing is so strong in the atmosphere. And then I know the word of God will come in teaching and instruction and impartation whatsoever. Just make sure your spirit is open to receive. This morning, together, let's welcome from the city of Zaria, Apostle Joshua Stillman. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Good morning, everybody. Father, we thank you for the privilege of hearing your word. We're hearers, we're listeners, we're doers. In the name of Jesus, thank you for this morning. Bless our hearts. Let your word come with power. Let it lift us. In the name of Jesus. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your Blow, blow, say Blow like a mighty wind Spirit of victory Cover us with your wind We want to see you We want to see you Like a mighty Russian wind We want to dwell Under the shadow of your wind we want to see God like a mighty rush and wind. Oh, we want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. Lift your hands up. Oh, 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 like a mighty wind. Yeah. We read a big Praise the Lord. Parables of Mercy, Part 1. Please be seated. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. We have to be very fast. Exodus chapter 34, from verse 6. Parables of Mercy, Part 1. We'll continue Part 2 in the second service. And then Part 3. Like Pastor said, I encourage you, please follow through the service. There would be a repetition. It would just be... Um, a continuation now scripture reveals to us the nature of God one of the ways that we know God is through the revelation of him from scripture scripture can help the believer to know God and in the revelation of scripture is the knowledge of the nature please follow carefully and the character of God so we can learn God as we study scripture and, and the Bible reveals the multifaceted nature of God And we're going to examine one of those attributes Exodus 34 from verse 6 and 7 And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious Long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth Verse 7 Keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generation next scripture psalm 145 from verse 8 and 9 we'll quickly look at a few scriptures psalm 145 from verse 8 and 9 it says the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He is also slow to anger and great or plenteous in mercy. Verse 9, the Lord is good to all. And then it says his tender mercies are over all his works. Next verse, Lamentations chapter 3 from verse 22 and 23. 
We are revealing the scriptures that attest to the fact that God is a merciful and a compassionate God The Bible says that His mercies are new every morning It says, great is thy faithfulness 22 and 23 22 and 23 It says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed and Then it says, because His compassions fail not They are new every morning And His faithfulness is so great Two more scriptures Micah chapter 7 we we'll start from verse 18 and 19. Micah chapter 7. Shalandas kaprahasubadiyah. Who is a God like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity, and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighted in mercy. He will turn again, and he will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities And thou will cast all their sins into the depth of the sea Someone say Amen, amen. Psalm 89 please and verse 14 Last scripture Psalm 89 and verse 14 The Bible says justice and judgment are the habitation or the foundation of your throne But then mercy and truth shall also go before your face so he's not only a God of judgment and justice He's also a God of mercy and of truth God is revealed from all these scriptures As an exceptionally merciful God And it is important we know the attributes of God Because they will help us to relate with God And they will help us know what we should become Because we become as we see him Are we together? Believers are also encouraged like God To be people that show mercy and compassion the Bible not only reveals the nature and the character of God as a merciful God Believers are encouraged all through scripture To be compassionate, to be merciful Ready for those scriptures? Number 1, Proverbs chapter 3 Just laying a few foundations Proverbs chapter 3, we'll read from verse 3 and 4 Proverbs 3, 3 and 4 Look up please It says, let not mercy and truth forsake you Bind them about thy neck Write them upon the table of your heart It says so By being merciful and by being compassionate You will find favor and good understanding In the sight of God and in the sight of man Proverbs 11 verse 17 Scriptures are good for edification It says the merciful man doeth good to his own soul Amazing that when you are merciful, you are not only helping another, but that you are doing good to your own soul. But he that is cruel troubles his own flesh. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 7. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 7. Let's read together. It's projected. Ready? Read, please. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That means the reward for being merciful is that you will also obtain mercy So here the Bible reveals that mercy is a harvest It's a harvest that comes only when you sow that seed of mercy Blessed are the merciful Very very powerful scripture Matthew 25 This will be a long reading and then I'll begin to teach Matthew 25 will start from verse 31 Now look at this very interesting scripture Jesus is teaching here Not another prophet, not another psalmist He says when the son of man shall come in his glory We're reading down to 46 And all the holy angels with him Then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory uh -huh. And before him shall be gathered all nations And he shall separate them one from another As a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats He shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goat on the left 34 Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand Come, ye blessed of my father Inherit the kingdom prepared for you From the foundation of the world 35 For I was an hungered And ye gave me meat I was thirsty And ye gave me drink This is God judging I was a stranger And ye took me in 
Look at that kind of risk. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink, that he ate? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we sick, or thee sick, or in prison and came to thee? 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me then shall he say unto them that are the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels for I was unhungered and ye gave me no meat I was thirsty and ye gave me no drink I was a stranger and ye took me not in naked and ye clothed me not sick and in prison and ye visited me not then shall he then shall they answer him saying lord when saw we this and that and that go to verse 45 and he shall answer them saying verily i say unto you inasmuch as ye did did not unto one of the least of this you did not do it to me also right 46 the last verse and this shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal isn't it amazing the basis of the king's judgment that he sat on the throne and began to tell the people that your crime and your offense is that you did not acknowledge that life was to be lived by the understanding of mercy and he presented scenarios before them where they did not show forth mercy very very powerful so not only is god a merciful god believers are encouraged from scripture again and again that part of the attributes of god we must imbibe it's not just faith it's not just um um diligence and so on and so forth but we must sustain the fortitude for being merciful Jesus taught and mentored the disciples and all who listened to him using parables. It was his culture to communicate heavenly realities using parables. He would find um, um, expressions that related to their context to communicate kingdom realities. Are we together? And he taught many parables that revealed the mysteries of the kingdom to guide believers to a point of conformity to the nature and the character of the Christ and I want us to look at three of these parables we'll look at one per service are we together number one the parable of the good Samaritan Luke chapter 10 let's start from verse 25 Jesus is teaching now and he's revealing to the disciples showing them the system of the kingdom he says behold a certain lawyer so the the, the 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 discourse starts with a lawyer coming to make inquiry he stood up and tempted him saying master what shall i do to inherit eternal life he said unto him what is written in your law how readest thou and he answered and said thou shalt love the lord thy god with all your heart your soul your strength and your mind and then love your neighbor that's where the trouble began when he began to talk about another person love your neighbor as yourself he gives you a standard to loving your neighbor that means before you love anyone you have to look at yourself the way you love yourself that means that when you do not love people is a reflection of a perception you have about yourself it says love your neighbor as yourself and he said unto him thou hast answered right this do and thou shalt live next verse but he willing to justify himself said to jesus and who is my neighbor story story let's go on now jesus is about to teach i love the way jesus you know he would answer you in a very intelligent way he would say now come with me he would journey through your mind and make sure that he explains to you in a way that leaves you convicted and Jesus answered and said a certain man now usually parables do not have the names of people they it, it just creates the personalities and then the lessons to learn except for the scenario of Lazarus it was a parable 
uh, well theologians argue that it was an event that really happened but then uh, it's also classified as a parable and Jesus answered and said a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho follow the story now and fell among thieves so this had nothing to do with the man's carelessness he was a man returning from a journey and he fell among thieves the Bible says they stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead and by chance there came down a certain priest now priests were after the order of Aaron they were descendants and sons of Aaron they were apportioned now the the priesthood had three categories there was the high priest then there were the priests that served and then there were the Levites who were descendants of Levi are we together now and so he's saying now that a certain priest went down his way and when he saw that man wounded so that was a pastor that was a man of God an apostle a prophet he was on his way to church and he saw a man wounded beaten half dead and the Bible says he passed by the other side and was on his way going likewise the Levites the Levites are like workers in church they help in the keeping of the tabernacle they help with all kinds of activities of deaconry activities uh, all the auxiliary activities that support the work in the house and here comes a Levite a worker trained loves God committed to a church and when he was at the place he looked at him a man do you think the man half dead would just be watching them i'm sure he would beckon on them and say please what can you do and they left him say no 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 i need to run to church and they looked at him and passed by the other side 33 but a certain stand that in those days the jews hated the samaritans they were not they were they were arch enemies they were rivals they would have nothing to do with themselves a certain samaritan as he journeyed he came where he was when he saw him hallelujah he had compassion everybody say compassion he had compassion and then next verse he went to him and bound his wounds did you know that was a risk number one it was in the night number two if someone caught him doing that he would believe he was the one who harmed that man and killed him this was a risk this man was taking his life binding his wounds pouring oil and wine and set him on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him that man suspended his journey he suspended he forgot about himself to attend on to a man that was wounded verse 35 and on the morrow that means he spent the entire night there an extra cost that was not initially two pence and gave them to the host and said unto them take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when i come again that means i will still come back i will come back and ensure that this man was all right he says i will repay you which of these three thinkest thou was the neighbor to him that fell among the thieves 37 and he said he that showeth mercy on him he that showeth mercy on him now here is the instruction jesus said unto him go return with this revelation and reproduce that act in your life i have taught you something about living that you borrow from the samaritan and that you go and begin to show seeds of mercy do likewise that means your neighbor is whoever needs your mercy anyone at all your relatives whoever it is now this looks like a very simple subject but it is powerful in the sight of god because every time you show mercy you also show gratitude it's, it's like communion you are you are reminding god that you are conscious of what he did to you through the substitutionary sacrifice of his son in the cross the parable of the samaritan go and do likewise to plant seeds of mercy go and do likewise more than anointing more than diligence more than faith and you know we live in a context today that is so self-centered we live in a context today that is so individualistic provided it does not come near your door it's none of your business are we together now 
And that is not the culture of the kingdom. The Bible says that we must go out of our way to sow seeds of mercy. There are many people right now who are programming woes and disaster to themselves and their children. Did you know that there are people today in this nation who may not necessarily have any investments? They may not even be successful personally, but they took the risk of spending their youthful days sowing seeds of mercy and they are ripping off that harvest today. The seeds of mercy. The seeds of mercy. That you find lives that need the mercy of God And you are there for people You help them stand You help them know God You help them love God Let me tell you Not everyone will be ungrateful You will find somebody who will remember you He will meet you and say 20 years ago You insisted I told you I did not have transport to go to church You said it's not a problem Took me out for lunch You made sure I got born again You followed up with me and now look what I've become And the person will vow and say Provided I am alive You will never beg for food again The parable of the good Samaritan That it is not enough in the sight of God That you are a priest It is not enough in the sight of God That you are a Levite Did you know that some of the most anointed people Some of the greatest preachers around the world Sincerely speaking and respectfully so when it has to do with these issues of mercy and kindness and love some of the intelligent ceos some of the great people we are great in terms of our field our craft but once it has to do with human relations it's almost zero so you can have a preacher who can preach can cast out devils can raise the dead but after church he's walking and he sees a faithful member who has been cleaning the church and does not even bother this man is about to trek back home he can stop in his front and buy something worth one thousand and cannot say take a hundred naira don't worry your faith is working one day you will have a car let me encourage you listen edge yourself in the history of people let them rise knowing you were there don't come into their future and expect to be featured in their life if you were not there when people were at their down times don't expect to be invited at the table of greatness are you getting this now there are many of us today by the grace of god it is not really your certificate that will feed you it is not really um, your intellectual investment as important as that is as the days go by you will find out that you want to take your child to a school and you look at the proprietor and he says I know you remember in 1999 somebody who was crying one day and you say you are the one he said this is the Lord's doing your child will become head boy head girl doesn't matter whether they are taking first position or not they, they become an eternal excellency because of something you did listen i want you to look back today if nobody can remember you as they are rising is proof you are taking a risk you are sitting on a time bomb you must find people there are many of our elderly people today in their old age they move around as though they are cursed and you are wondering what did they do with their youthful days who did you raise when you were director who did you lift Every time God prospers you, use your blessing to create the history of impact in the lives of people. There are people who can never go down. They've raised too many people to stop them from touching the ground again. Please listen to what I teach you in this conference. It is the wisdom that makes for living in the cosmos. The little children that we see and push today. Tomorrow will be the ones to come and hold our hands. This individualistic living, I am happy, I have a job, I have this, I am comfortable. No, do not make the mistake of Esther. She was forgetting about the Jews and Mordecai warned her and says you are taking a risk. One day they will find out you are a Jew. And when they find out you are a Jew, you will not have any support system. Listen, the person you ignore today will become your strength tomorrow. You must sustain the intelligence. Use your strength and invest it in the future by showing mercy to people. After church, you are on your way going, you see someone trekking. You can pick the person. Oh, have you eaten? It doesn't have to be every day. 
let me do something for you today who are you you are a member of household of david yes and you are playing a message now the message you are playing will make sense to the person because it's coming forth from a life that is true the purity of your christianity is affecting is making the person believe what he's hearing and you leave the person with an impression what is your name sir my name is john he will write it in a diary and pray every day and after 10 years do you know that i had the honor and the privilege my principal many years ago sir one of the people who gave me a foundation of godliness i had to find a way of looking for him i searched for him and made sure that i blessed him and i told him i said that they should tell him that by god's grace you have not seen anything provided i'm alive just know that you made a very wise investment in believing in me and trusting me be careful who you don't believe in because sometimes you will be taking a risk when you don't believe in people and they still succeed sometimes they will go out of their way to teach you a lesson that you may teach your children and your children's children this is what you get when you come to church the wisdom seeds of mercy many people you will be merciful to will not recognize you many of them will not even appreciate you many of them will trivialize your impact don't worry the seeds fell on different kinds of soil not every soil is a bad soil there will be a grateful mother there will be a grateful young lady there will be a grateful young man who will stand up one day and say i must do this is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And that became the breakthrough of Mephibosheth. Let us make this sacrifice for the sake of our children and our children's children. That you may not have any naira and cobalt, dollar and pound, but you have the richness, the investment of a history that has lifted people you cried with people when they cried you were there when they lost loved ones you didn't come asking questions where is your faith no you sit with them there and cry and say it's all right god will help you one day you will come out of this oh i lost my father i lost my mother and you run away and then when they make it you come and badge into their future no no blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us listen to me many of our loved ones today would have had opportunities to be wealthy to be blessed but they misused precious opportunities that God gave them to sow seeds of mercy. There are people today who cannot walk down the street with their heads lifted. You know why? Because they misuse the access, the opportunity that God gave them to lift others. Someone came and said, please, can you help me in school? Please help me. My school fees, I love God. You can come and donate even a billion naira in church which i commend but then that person is your relative and saying please okay don't give me the money give me a job to do let me walk say no get out of here and because the same lord is rich unto all god will route another way then you find out for instance that your own children now don't turn out to be anything useful and it's that same person who comes and is standing by you on the sick bed and your life is full of memories of pain please do not die in pain don't go to your grave in pain because of unwise decisions god is giving us wisdom this morning applicable wisdom that as you step out of here one day you can cook and just call everybody and say you know what i don't have the resources to do it every day but i can do it once and you you know People are so self-centered today, Pastor, that anytime you are nice to people, they begin to suspect. There must be something. They ask, what are you looking for? That's how wicked and self-centered our world are. You want to be a Christian? It's not only by praying in tongues. You want to be a Christian? It's not only by priesthood, of preaching, of teaching, of cleaning chairs in the church alone. Wonderful. 
but something about your life the seeds of mercy i made up my mind that by the grace of god i will fill my life experiences with being there for people with raising not because i'm looking for something in the future but it is a beautiful way to live to to know that you were there when someone was crying it was on your hands that their tears dropped that you are there for them and you know let me say this respectfully it's one of the blessedness of our foundations many of us grew up from families and religious contexts that they were not very open to the things of the spirit but they will be there for you someone dies in one hour you see people singing praise and worship songs to your house they will sleep there they will cry there you will not even know who was who had the bereavement but our generation today the moment you lose your job you lose whatever everybody backs out when god grants you breakthrough here they come again where were the friends of job he was the richest man in the east for a while they were there with him and then eventually they left and only his wife was there and job prayed and prayed for his friends and god restored his fortune i think chapter 42 and verse 10 and there all those people began to come back again please be part of the history of people i give you a secret of living a fruitful life i show you an investment that does not fail invest in the life of people rising not people who have risen you are a man of god do not ignore the young people who are in your church those young people praying they may make mistakes it's better that they make mistakes in your lifetime you are correcting them you are seeing it there their pride their foolishness their zeal you can call them and say look i love you but it ought not to be so yes the choir person is stubborn yes the usher is not listening it's better they make the mistakes in your lifetime are we together learn this from jesus mighty jesus moj jesus comes to sit with little children and he says let the little children come to me there are adults that are hated by children because they have no sign of mercy they are anointed their ministry is only to adults when children hate you it's a sign from god that something is really wrong with your life i'm telling you this because they have the purest of heart if a child runs away from you unnecessarily go for a retreat you would think i'm joking but what i'm saying is very very serious the purity of their heart something about you should draw them to you if children come here now they don't care who is preaching on stage they should be able to come and and hold you and hit you and you don't just hit them and say i'm serious i'm serving god you are like the priest and the levite how many people have we ignored in an attempt to serve God the parable of the good Samaritan do you know let me tell you this for those of you in ministry many of the people who will love you will not just love you because of the accuracy of your teaching many people who will love you will not only love you because of miracles signs and wonders let me tell you a majority of the people who will love you and stake their life and their loyalty they will love you because of an experience you gave them in god something that you did in their lives that will make them vow and say you will be my pastor for life we die together we rise up together it is not just good preaching it is not just good singing let me tell you this it is not even just good character you must do something that touches people there are politicians today whether they are good or bad they have edged themselves in the history of people too much to turn against them how do you start fighting them there's somebody you can help today right from now you can begin to build pillars of mercy in your destiny listen this is an assignment i'm giving you that after service you begin to say this is intentional i will start doing this now hello how are you i know that um, things have not worked well i will transfer a little ten thousand now please use that money buy food for mama and let her know that it's with love from me 
the person will not say thank you and you say this is what i hate this is why i hate giving don't worry you will reap what you sow not where you sowed are we together because i know that many of us are saying apostle i tried it before you don't know my relatives you don't know where i come from seeds of mercy seeds of mercy the parable of the good samaritan was a revelation to us that no matter what it is that we are doing god looks at our show of mercy be merciful sow that seed of mercy find somebody who needs you and be there for them pastors don't just preach and use members to build churches love them sincerely and be there for them members are first human beings before congregants are we together many people will tell you i love this man but it is not his message i love that woman but it is not their message they look at that compassion someone asked me and say apostle you are always a busy person and what have you really missed with all this lockdown i said i've not missed the adults i thank god for them but they have my teachings to listen to the real people have missed are my children that all these children just run and come as soon as you say may the grace of our lord jesus christ that's when their service starts the love of god the fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide what they just run they don't care whether you heal the sick you raise someone from wheelchair they will jump on you dirty you and you are the expression of jesus to them they cry coming to church because they crave for something about christ they've seen in your life while you are preaching they are sleeping they absolutely don't care but as soon as the service is over you are busy sweating they tap you and say daddy i want bobo and now you don't know it's god is using them to remind you don't strangle compassion because of ministry don't be too adult that you forget the wisdom of the childlike living let me tell you this is god blessing us we're going to pray but that you should come for a church service and live wiser these are the priests you see the benefit of what i'm teaching you will not be shown in one year it will not be shown in two years if these are transgenerational mysteries you're passing and someone's car spoils and it's not like you are hurrying up going somewhere you pretend as if you didn't see it and you are playing a powerful worship song oh i will do anything for you jesus my jesus my jesus you died for me and you pass someone and and you see this is why sometimes when god begins to bless and lift people you can't really see why he's doing it but they have a history and they've made god to covenant with himself and say this family will never beg for bread because of this do you know no matter how powerful the sermon is that i teach after one year you may forget you may just remember a few points no matter what happens in a meeting and a conference even if all of you stand up now and float in the air and sit down it will be news only for a few months but the kindness and the compassion you show someone that's not something that leaves their mind they will go back home and think they will learn lessons they will make vows are we together so god is answering someone's question apostle why don't people like me nobody cares about me why should they what seeds did you sow it is fraud to go to a farm where you didn't sow anything and be complaining that there's no harvest when people run away from you and your personality is pungent to people it's a message it's not always an attack who can love you enough to say thank you for your preaching thank you you are a ceo i don't love the ceo i don't just love the preacher i love the person if people love your office if people love your job alone if people love your talent and your skill alone you are in trouble because those things are transient they can come they can go but when they love you not just for who you are but the disposition you have you have so cultured yourself after the principles of the kingdom we love him because he first gave himself for us 
the love of God revealed in that while we were yet sinners in due season Christ died for us go he said and do likewise household of David the body of Christ listen to me it's an instruction go and do likewise that it, it should start right from this service that you can write a resolution that on this day at this wind of mercy conference I make up my mind that no 24 hour will pass without me looking for someone to sow seeds of mercy and I do it because I love God but I do it also because it's a fail proof investment my children will eat from it my children's children will eat from it when you invest in real estate you have done well but the land cannot say thank you someone can even collect the land from you right when you invest in shares and put your money in another company wonderful the shares can rise you can make money you can also lose money but when you invest in men they are like mobile ATMs everybody will not fail hallelujah so make up your mind this morning that by the Spirit of God the self-centeredness the hatred the bitterness I will never forgive you till I die till Jesus comes well and you are even talking about heaven when I'm in heaven even when I see you how are you sure you are going to get there with that kind of attitude you see how we behave you want the gate of heaven to open for you with your attitude so that you will enter blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy are you ready to pray rise upon your feet you are beautiful in all your ways you are beautiful in all your ways one more time you are in all your ways Hallelujah Two prayer points And we're done for this first service I'd like you to declare Father plant a seed in me That grants me the grace To show mercy and compassion Let that seed Be planted in me Are you praying? Lift your voice and begin to pray I came to church this morning to learn. I came to church to receive wisdom. That more than my priesthood, more than being a Levite, I must become a conduit of mercy, a conduit of compassion, a conduit of mercy, more than my gifts, more than my job, more than my skill. Go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Go and help likewise. Go and support likewise. Go and be there likewise. Go and lift likewise. Go and invest in men likewise. Hallelujah. Now look up. You are going to pray and say, Father, take away unforgiveness. Take away bitterness. All of these attributes that choke our spirit, they don't look obvious, but they are dangerous. They will strangle the anointing from your life. They will strangle the, 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 they will create haziness in hearing the voice of God. Clean my heart, oh God, and let me be in a position where I can love and show mercy. I'm desperate to experience the reality of the life of God. And I take away these encumbrances that stand between me and my intimacy with the Spirit. Lift your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. Apostle, I bless my family members. They didn't appreciate me. Let it go. Let it go. God is the rewarder. God is the rewarder. Apostle, I bless my members and they are not there to appreciate me. In the name of Jesus. Apostle, I support my husband. I support my wife. I support my children. They are not appreciated. In the name of Jesus, continue that which you do. The Bible says to not be weary in well-doing. It says, for we will reap in due season if we fail not. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have five more minutes. We have one more prayer. And then I'll speak over your life. You are going to pray. Some of us have made mistakes of neglecting to sow seeds of mercy in the past. As it is right now, there is nobody in your life who thinks you are a blessing enough for them to take their life to support you. It's a risk. You cannot live in today's world that way. If you don't help yourself, you are gone. Nobody can help you. If your hands are tied, you are finished. Nobody can say, I remember you. If no one can trace you to their lifting, you are in trouble. But the beautiful thing about seeds is you can start where you are. He told Abraham, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. So it's a lesson. We are going to pray. Because if you look back, there is no life you have raised. There is nobody you have helped. You've not sown seeds to anybody's life. Nobody has gone to school because you are alive. Nobody has known Jesus because you are alive. No discouraged person has found strength because you are alive. Nobody could, co could complete his rent because you got a job. It's too risky. It's too risky. You are going to pray. Lord, by your spirit, bring people who are worthy of help. Bring people who... Don't just pray and say, send helpers for me. Be the helper first. Grace to raise people. Grace to sow seeds of mercy. Lord, bring the people that I can begin to invest in. It may not be monetary. It may be an advice. It may be a revelation. You help someone to strengthen their relationship with Jesus. You help someone to fund their skills. You must add the impact. I show you a powerful secret this morning. That your 10 years can be secured. Your 20 years can be secured. Because like the good Samaritan. Do you think that certain man. When he becomes healed. When he becomes strong. Will he ever forget the good Samaritan? Hallelujah. Listen. I remember. Someone sending me a text one time and said. Apostle, I don't call you father just because of your spiritual impact in my life. I lost my father many years ago, he was saying. But you have held my hand and you have helped me and done everything a father should do. I remember crying that night, reading that text. I'm not a very emotional person. But there are text messages that touch me. Apostle, you're a mighty man of God. Lord, take the glory. And I turn and face my work. Apostle, I got healed after your prayer. Wonderful. But Apostle, thank you for changing my life. While I was crying, you were there. Now, that is, what, that is what breaks me. And I just sit and say, Lord, thank you. That if I die today, my only regret will be that I didn't finish my assignment. But let it be that I can still live in those who are alive. Like Abel, though dead, yet speak it. It is not just the longevity of your living. But the quality People can carry you in their minds They carry you in their memories Their books are full of your name They never say anything about their life Without mentioning your impact Truthfully so They will teach their children Any day you see this man And see his children Bless him I pray for you In the name of Jesus The son of the living God the grace to walk in the wisdom that mercy provides. May that grace be released upon you. In the name of Jesus. That the lesson 
that we have learned from the good Samaritan this parable that Jesus gave may you not make the mistake of the priest may you not make the mistake of the Levite in the name of Jesus may your life be full of investments of mercy and compassion may your days be full of investments of mercy and compassion may your children eat from it may those connected to you eat from it in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you listen to me for those of you who have made the mistake of sowing trouble in your future by the way you have treated people in the past by the way you have treated families in the past by the things you have said about people the things you have done to people some of you they are your parents some of you they are your relatives some of them they are men and women of God some of them they are your pastors they are your leaders in the name of Jesus the, the tragedy that you have programmed to happen in your future we intersect with the mercy of God let it not come to pass that the things listen the things that people have said in anger because of something you may have done in the name of Jesus Christ may the mercy of God intercept for you your children will not be victims of any speaking that was against you and I pray for you there are people here who are suffering the wickedness the Bible says that um, the fathers have sinned and how did he put the scripture yes there are families here you even had to change your surname because the names seem to be padlocked and when they identify you with that name and that family it comes with memory they say which one which of these names the one I know yes you will not get this job again not when I'm alive I pray for you everything around your foundation that has come as a result of the ill doings of people and you have been connected through it by bloodline at this mercy conference let the blood speak for you in the name of Jesus let the blood speak for you every door that has been closed because seeds of mercy were not sown in the past we declare again may God give you a fresh start by the power of the Holy Spirit you leave this service and in the name of Jesus you will begin to command extraordinary results in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands and give Jesus praise Just wave your hands to him. Bless the name of the Lord. What a message. Oh, Father, we thank you. We are so grateful. Thank you for your word. Did you receive something this morning? Then lift up hands and give your praise. While he was praying, I saw it. The cloud over some light. It has been taken care of by God. Amen. Everything is clear right now. Amen. Don't go back and repeat the errors of the past. Alright? We bless the name of the Lord. This is the fastest way to the top. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you for your grace. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you because the entrance of your word gives understanding, light, and even understanding to the simple. We ask that you will help us again. Open our eyes that we may see. Open our ears that we may hear. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you will help us we cast our crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious master. I cast my crown before. I am one down before Glorious Majesty, your 
but the Lord is healing someone there's someone who has a severe I'm seeing a severe condition I don't know if it's something around the, your side I'm, I'm seeing the Lord touch that person there is healing that God is bringing for that person this morning in the name of Jesus and I'm seeing the Lord is also healing a lady this is, this is something that has to do with your cycle I'm seeing the Lord heal that person right now. Very supernatural healing. God is bringing that healing. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Again, Pastor, thank you. It's always an honor. Thank you. I appreciate you and your dear wife. Praise the name of the Lord. We began in the first service teaching on the parable of mercy this is part two the parable of mercy is an attempt to reveal the nature and the character of god as it relates to his being compassionate as it relates to his being merciful and to draw forth an understanding from that nature applying it to our lives so that we will excel and so that we will reign remember we reign in this kingdom on the strength of the spiritual illumination that we have the light that comes to us is able to transmit us to higher dimensions of possibilities hallelujah and i did say in the first service that scripture reveals the nature of god that we study scripture among other things to know god to understand not just his methodology but his character and his nature so scattered through scriptures are the way god is not just the way he acts the way he is the bible says again and again that the lord is gracious and compassionate he's merciful and um believers are also enjoined from scripture to be merciful and to be compassionate we looked at the first parable the parable of the good samaritan from luke 10 25 to 37 we'll go straight to the second parable matthew chapter 18 please we'll start from verse 21 matthew chapter 18 Matthew chapter 18 Then came Peter to him and said Lord how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times 
Peter is asking a question now it's amazing how Jesus mentored the disciples did you know that it was at the later part of his mentorship he began to talk about issues of power and signs and wonders when he started his mentorship he started in what we call the Beatitudes teaching them on the ways of the kingdom then he now started relating the culture of the kingdom helping them to connect to it and to build character in them so this was one of those uh, sessions and he said unto him until seven times I say not unto to thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. There's a lot of theological debate as to what Jesus was saying there. We're not going into that. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king. Here comes a parable now. Remember the foundation that led to this parable. It's talking about his relationship with the people around him and he says the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants next verse and when he had begun to reckon one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents but for as much as he had not to pay his lord commanded him to be sold it was it was very regular to sell people uh, I mean they would be collateral themselves and you could sell them into slavery so to sell him and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him saying Lord have patience with me and I will pay thee all then the Lord of that servant was moved with here comes the word again compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt 28 but the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him an hundred pence and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying pay me that thou owest and his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him saying have patience with me same word same expression same condition and i will pay thee all and he would not but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt so when his fellow servants saw what was done they were very sorry and came and told unto their lord all that was done 32 then his lord after he had called him said unto him thou wicked servant i forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me should not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant even as i had had pity on thee 34 and his lord was wrought and delivered him to the tormentors in other words just hang on here isn't it amazing he gave him a harvest of mercy and the man insisted and said the harvest you gave me is wrong because that's not the seed i sowed and the lord was happy to change back the harvest to look like the seed that he sowed this man got the harvest of mercy and now he went to sow a seed of wickedness and the master said i gave you a wrong harvest and I will change that harvest to look like what you just did. And the Bible says he was delivered to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise, in that way, by this method, shall my heavenly Father do also to you, if ye from your heart forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses, very 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 powerful scripture we really can just stop there the parable of the unmerciful servant they call it now look at this scenario jesus was teaching them on the issue of forgiveness brotherly love and kindness and he comes to a point where peter is asking him a question i'm sure peter had a pile of people and he needed explanations are you saying that all these wrongdoers and all these wicked people who oppressed me while fishing are you saying i should just let things go like that and jesus would usually not answer directly he led him to a parable and he said let me paint a scenario there was a certain man so th this this story has to do with a man who owed the king 
And the king called for the people and said, Why have you not paid me my money? And the man knelt down and pleaded and said, Look, I desire to pay, but the wherewithal is not there. He didn't even ask the king to forgive him. He just said, Can you extend my time so I can go? And, and the king looked at him and realized that before I became a king, I was once like you. Someone else showed me mercy. Let me extend that same mercy. And he told him, I forgive you and the man went with the joy of that pardon and quickly ran and met someone who had a by far lesser amount and said pay me my money and the man began to plead with him and said I'm sorry and instead of the man to remember please learn to remember Learn to remember The Bible says let it not be When you have built houses When you have done all of this You will say my power and my might has brought me this It says but thou shall remember the Lord That means you can forget It was Bishop Oyedepo that says If you can be thoughtful Then you can be thankful It is true Thoughtfulness helps Thanksgiving thoughtfulness also helps be merciful when you think about everything God has done and you think about how he's lifted you now he looked at this man and he said no way there's no forgiveness you are paying me for sure but then there were other witnesses who were watching and they went back and told the king so and so happened and the king was angry he said send for that man again I forgave you and you could not let this man go to forgive such a man this was a description of the heart of a typical man it is easy to see the fault in others it is easy are we together now you watch people spectators when footballers are playing and you see them quarreling everybody why didn't you pass it simple free kick and you could not score and you see them arguing and saying all kinds of things and yet that person does not even have the money to buy a ball are we together he's revealing something about the human nature that we should avoid in his parable that the nature of men is such that until you are in the picture of reality it is usually easier said than done until you become a pastor you never know the burden that is upon a pastor you don't know why a pastor may not be able to eat and he's thinking and praying until you become a leader you may not know the burden of being a leader until you become a parent you may not know what it takes it is easy and it is more comfortable to stand from a distance and to judge to stand from a distance and to conclude over the lives of family members leaders and so on and so forth and he's using it to teach something here the king gave him all the pardon that he needed in fact it is even a surprising thing that that man had the effrontery to go back to someone and even demand his money you would expect that after such benevolence he would run back and say hey the king did something for me and i want to do the same thing for you please the 10 pence you owe me 100 pence god bless you and he would have given himself remember what i taught in the first service he would have given himself a memory he would have etched his impact as being merciful in the life of that person and the same witnesses who reported him would have still taken that report back to the king and said king he just did what you did to him and the king would have still called him back in any case he would have still appeared the second time before the king this time around would have been for greater honor are we together now because the bible lets us know that while that drama were happening there were people who were watching too while you are being merciful there is a cloud of witnesses watching even though you don't see them they are there and they take reports back to the king i was a witness i saw the way this man demonstrated mercy and kindness and you will not know but one day the king will send for you suddenly he says come i hear in your family nobody has risen 
I am not only pardoning you because you have shown mercy, it is your season of lifting. And for reasons you cannot explain, everybody and everything, including a fish, starts bringing coin out for you. And people will say, what did you do? They were witnesses watching. Let me tell you, nobody is really alone. The concept of being alone is as revealed by your eyes. We are always surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Are we blessed? But he went to the man who owed him so much and strangled him and said, No way, I will jail you. A very powerful lesson. Everything that you are angry about before God you are also a victim of you are angry unforgiveness you are saying he didn't even come to say sorry he treated me in a business and he couldn't say sorry and God looks at you and says I can't remember the last time you even prayed not even to say sorry just to say that song good morning Jesus good morning Lord and yet you have the gods and the effrontery to come and report someone isn't it amazing you watch this happen with children isn't it they go and steal something and then when you try to collect it they are reporting someone and saying he took my thing and you are watching that drama and god uses them to act yourself to you and you are watching what you do all the time partakers of god's mercy god trusts you with something and yet you cannot give it back to him God shows you mercy. Many of us have books where we write the, the, the names of offenders. And the popular saying, over my dead body, we say. You know what a dead body looks like? I've been to the mortuary a few times. Let me tell you the truth. I have, I have seen dead bodies. If you see a dead body, you will never say over your dead body. You're quiet. I believe you are meditating, you are listening to what I am saying seriously because it is a very powerful message that blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy you see, looking merciful puts you in a position where society treats you as a fool they look at you and say, you mean this is how you are but the, the excellency of the lifting that comes to your life when you decide to be merciful that you have obtained mercy there are some of us who people owe us physically money and you know that those people may never be able to pay i'm not teaching you to be irresponsible and i'm not endorsing people to take you for granted but there must be times in your life where you will have to train yourself to overlook some things it happens everywhere even in secular societies there are times that they release prisoners to go in the dealings of god with the nation of israel there was a year called the year of jubilee after seven sabbaths 49 seven times seven years the 50th year they were given instructions if you had a slave and someone who you bought release them to go if they say you have been too kind and merciful and they don't want to go then you punch a hole in their ears and they have become bond servants not people who are there because you force them they love you and they chose to stay but you release people this was god giving them in the old testament how come everybody who owes you must pay emotional debts spiritual debts many of us have a pile of anger annoyance pastors fighting pastors business people fighting business people husband fighting wife rivalry everywhere and we are believers this is something that happens all across the nations of the earth and jesus is teaching us here that everybody who has obtained mercy did you know the bible says it is of the lord's mercy help me that we are not consumed that because his compassion fails not it is of the lord's mercy it is not of him that willeth it is not of him that runneth the will of man is powerful but he said it's not just by willpower it is not even by running it is of the lord that showeth mercy so that we walk conscious of the fact that i'm alive today by the mercy of god in him i live in him i move in him i i, I have my being and that we need to unclog our lives 
many cares and many worries. There are some of us who have wrinkled our faces. People look at you and say, you say, guess my age. They say, you look roughly 55. Say, what if you have not even up to 33? What happened? We added certain luggages that did not come from God. There are people who are angry in this country. They walk around frowning and talking and you say, good morning. What is good about the morning? And they move around and they are angry angry and you tell them why are you angry they say sit down it started when i was five years old now i'm not downplaying people's experiences don't get me wrong but you have there is the excellency of being a christian what then is the excellency of the ministry of the holy spirit you cannot just be sociological there is an ability given to the believer to be able to rise above and beyond all of these limitations get to a point in your life where you can say i know that my father left my mother do you know many people today ask them why they are failing they will tell you when i was four years old my father left me my mother did this i will never forgive him for as long as i'm alive and you find out your life is not moving forward you keep complaining till you marry too and you start being irresponsible to your child and your child says, Daddy, why are you irresponsible? You say, ask my father. You see that? The same thing happening here. Many people cannot take responsibility over their lives. They don't do well in life. They fail. They get angry. They hurt themselves and others. And they justify their experiences with something in the past. And not that they are making reference to it because they are transformed. It becomes their justification, their refusal. Armed robbers who kill people everywhere When you catch them and sit them down Say why are you doing this They say I came from this family And they, they believe that in anger Because they were ill treated Then they ill treat others Are we together? Yes. Blessed are the merciful For they shall be shown mercy Apostle, this person did not believe in me when I started. And now that I've made it, I will live, I will spend my life punishing the person to prove to the person you did it is unnecessary. Look at Joseph. When his brothers treated him bad and God exalted him, he brought his brothers and he said, Eat. God is speaking to someone this morning Because many of us, even though we are in church Even though we are anointed, we are wonderful people The truth of the matter is We are carrying luggages that Jesus did not give us He said, my yoke is easy And my burden is light God is speaking to you this morning In this second service It's time to take down certain unnecessary burdens Everybody cannot be your enemy In the choir around some of you probably respectfully speaking maybe from the time you came till now you're already angry with two people this is my seat are you not seeing my not please take it easy look let me tell you this if you die they will cry for you for just seven days and leave you and life continues you must learn to take life easy there is a childlike approach that gives you peace jesus said my peace i give you not as the world gives do i give our lives are too busy Busy and filled with so many things that are unnecessary. Are we together? Do you know there are people you cannot sit with and have a meaningful conversation? The moment you sit with them, they are reporting someone or getting angry. Or there, there's no meaningful kingdom discussion that leads to the mutual edification of someone. The moment they sit down, it is about a discussion. You notice that lady's shoe? I didn't even know that this kind of shoe is still... What is... what? Why are our hearts tilted towards that level of evil? After a powerful church service and you sit down, you would expect to say, Oh, glory be to God. That worship was so blessing. I mean, the word came, I was blessed. Someone sits and says, Can you imagine that in the heat of that anointing, somebody was sleeping? Is that all you saw? Is that all God did in that service? I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify, your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify, your goodness is real. Hallelujah. 
depression used to be something for older people maybe in the mid 50s but right now our society is full of young people who are depressed you measure a young man's bp and you are almost falling with with with, with your instrument there because you are saying what are you thinking about he says what am i not thinking about everybody doesn't like me does the government hate me and everybody hates me and god too doesn't like me and you know people just complain and say all those kinds of things they hurt themselves and they hurt others a wounded person cannot heal others you will need to be healed yourself before you heal others the parable very simple teaching but i want you to have this understanding especially when you want to become a leader because until you program yourself to love people regardless to love people in spite of to forbear to forgive 24 hours is too is too long to have people let me tell you this you don't need up to 24 hours to be offended you just need to wake up in the morning and find out someone ate your remaining food and you want to kill somebody that morning and and you know the devil studies us and when he sees that good things are about to come he will use offense to cause you to abort everything have you noticed that when seasons are about to open it's like everything offends you you go to pray after fasting for six hours and pray you come out and the first person is your loved one and he says we've been looking for you are you the only one who is a christian don't be stupid that's the devil the devil is trying to rob you of joy because of something that is coming it is not the physical people talking to you no notice that when seasons are shifting and great things are about to happen there is agitation from the kingdom of hell everything seems to fight you that is the time to rejoice in the lord and again i say rejoice This cloth you are wearing to church ah you are dressing as if you're a grandmother no problem you just laugh it away and create a joke out of it not are you stupid did you ever give me anything i've just been keeping quiet oh let me tell you what you did 10 years uh, my thought is come no 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 do you have the courage the stamina and the maturity to look at your yesterday and still smile at it Apostle, my father didn't believe in me, I understand. But maybe he didn't know better. Can you be like the king who called the man? When people become broken and repentant and in need of mercy, as much as it is within your power, show them mercy. What I'm teaching you is unpopular, but these are deep kingdom mysteries. That will make people vow a vow and say forever i will make sure that i bless you i will make sure that i pray for you mercy i've said my story i think one of my experiences in this church a number of times how that many years ago i went to buy sugar cane remember the story and then i met these two women and they were trying to bring out money from their their rapper and i, I said please let me let me help you and they said no 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 i said please i insist it was not more than 100 naira and i bought the sugar cane for them i felt so happy and then they began to bless me and then one of the women said my son forever walk upon gold a woman who cannot was barely trying to lose there are times that you will be in kairos moments of your life and it will not just be prayer and fasting it will be the discernment to show mercy you will pick somebody in your car apostle there are armed robbers in nigeria i know but there are also angels in nigeria moving to bless people hallelujah one day you pick somebody in your car and he just gives you one message and drops and you did not know that you picked an angel you thought you picked a passenger many of us have ignored seasons of breakthrough because our hearts were not merciful do you know how many people who live today in regret because they had an opportunity to help they had an opportunity to show kindness they had an opportunity to show mercy they vowed and said no way like your merciful servant and years down the line the people they thought will never rise 
because there is still a God in heaven and God routed the lifting of those people through some other means and now the people have become great one day you open an office door and you find out that it was someone who used to sweep your house before who begged you one day and say it's true I'm sorry I stole I stole the money but it was out of pressure my mother was sick and I didn't have the courage to ask you I am sorry you say you are sorry you will first work without salary number two I'm still deciding whether I will kill you or leave you alive I want to sow seeds of mercy in my life to show people so much compassion that after many years I should be able to walk the streets of Lagos without protocol without it doesn't have to be on or only when you are preaching that you can be at the ATM and someone says God forbid I will not let you take your five naira when I'm here and you say what happened your message you gave it free to me I didn't pay for it and that's what blessed me or you gave me your message and somebody just bought the whole CDs and gave me as a gift I thank you for teaching that message what can I do for you I said no 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 just want to withdraw something say no is this your son yes please let me sponsor this child up till university give me an honor to do that a prayer point answered in one minute because you were merciful being merciful is a powerful seed it does not die Please believe me this is a parable God this parable is a caution God is speaking to us and telling us that some of us are making mistakes you have obtained mercy from God and you have obtained mercy from men you must begin to live your life intentionally showing mercy intentionally showing seeds mommy I know about this house help I know that she's been lazy she's not been a very nice lady but the other day I heard her crying and telling God to help her that means in spite of her misbehavior something in her loves the Lord could we try to talk to her one day instead of saying you are a useless lady like your useless mother and your useless father who gave birth to you many people have done that and today they are biting their fingers in regret because that little girl will grow up and she will go to secondary school and join one small fellowship and encounter the Holy Ghost and then become a great lady and one day one man who is somebody else's harvest will just come and marry that girl marry her into blessings prepared blessings and they drive and come to your house with your own children watching God knows how to reward people and God knows how to deal with people as Pharaoh God knows how to bring people to their knees and so this is a message for us to be merciful say I receive grace please shout it say I receive grace to be merciful grace to be merciful you're driving and someone who is careless just hits your car and it's not anything serious and the person just i'm sorry i'm so sorry i'm sorry i will fix it sometimes you can just say it's all right god bless you just go let me tell you what will happen number one you will feel stupid number two you will feel foolish number three you will feel weak and the devil tells you this is all this is how you keep being a fool till the whole world cheats you oh dear but the day the king stands for you the day the king there are witnesses who are watching you while you do those things do you know that some of our loved ones did that for many years they raised people they helped people who later talked against them they sent people sponsored them through school they went back to villages and spoiled their names and said everything and god told the people be silent one day someone would just come and start rewarding them and you say mama why is everybody blessing you like this the king has sent for you let me tell you the king still stands for people man of god let me tell you the king still stands for people be as compassionate pour your all give your best serve with your heart be merciful to people we give from the abundance of that which we have received how many times did you go to bed without praying there were arrows that were flying by night to kill you and God disrupted the sleep of an intercessor somewhere and forced the person to get up and pray in tongues for hours not knowing what he was praying for that was the prayer that secured you 
to even have gotten the contract in the first place please let us know that there is more that has happened to us by the mercy of God than more that has happened by our strength it is not of him that we let only God knows the number of people who pray for Apostle Joshua Selman every day so what you see may not be a true reflection of just my prayer it may be the intercession of silent people I may never see who are praying oh God grant him revelation and when I begin to have angelic visitations you would think it's just because I am deep in the things of God it may be there but you will be surprised someone with a covenant with God praying and say Lord open the door for this my son let him see you more and God comes to you in honor of that prayer are we blessed the unmerciful servant that after this service there are people you are going to pick up your phone your mother you have not spoken to for 10 years and said over i will only come the day she's dead if i hear that she's dead simply because you said she's a witch no problem even if she's a witch no problem you are you are exalted above principalities and powers honor her for being the womb that gave birth to you my irresponsible father is a drunkard somewhere Romy, i'm not even i'm not proud to identify my you have been calling him your uncle some of you after this service may need to buy some things and send home and say mama please take you may say this stupid child what brought you no problem you just drop it and go back and say god be my witness the mercy i have received from you i've communicated the same i assure you that one day the king will send for you he will send for you through the health of your children he will send for you through the the increase of your business one day the king will send for you but the problem is will he send for you to deal with you for what you have done or will he send for you to honor you because in the parable of the talents if you read the king came back and saw all of them the owner of the vine he honored and promoted others and for one of them he took him down because he was not profitable some of you may need to do certain intentional things after this service just because your loved ones didn't treat you well some of us god has helped us financially and god has put us in a position of mercy have you thought of someone who was nice to you before somebody who led you that that mama who was the person who taught you in 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 bible school one day you can buy a bag of rice and take to her house and said i just came to honor you say who are you say you may not know when i was 11 years I was a stubborn child even God revealed to me that I was stubborn you were the person who was patient with me until I gave my life to Christ now I am pastor this this and that and the woman may look at you and say God be a witness to us even in my grave bless this person you will leave that place yet that record was written in heaven one day the king will send for you come it's your time of reward and he will open doors of favor and doors of grace that you may never imagine these are the systems of the kingdom please do not trivialize what i'm teaching you some of you while you were on your way coming to church someone paid your transport you have enough to pay someone's transport after service why don't you sow that seed you don't need to know the person and you don't need any announcement to go on social media and say there are three great people on earth this my friend is the other you don't need all of that sometimes you can go to fuel your car and tell yourself anybody who is after me i'm going to fuel for that day learn to do the things that sow seeds of mercy you have obtained mercy from god your arrears was paid don't sit down and eat alone and die alone the way you know the way we say it in nigeria no your gate man is there he could connive with armed robbers to kill you yet he has been faithful for six years one day why don't you give him thirty thousand and say go and give your wife and say thank you for being faithful i remember i was once a gate man 20 years ago listen anything god delivered you from try to be an instrument of mercy to someone in that area too i testify i testify that your goodness is real 
I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Hallelujah. We have obtained mercy from God. God has been faithful. God has been gracious. There are times that God has honored you and blessed you beyond your prayer request. Even during your prayerlessness, you kept seeing results of prayers you know you did not remember praying. That is messy. And you can communicate the same to people. Make up your mind that no 24 hour will pass without me sowing that seed of mercy. Do it for your house help. Do it for your gate men. Do it for everybody. The seed of mercy. Once upon a time before you got a job, you know what it meant to be to be in a position of lack. Now God has blessed you. You have siblings. I know many of them may be irresponsible towards you. Many of them may not even be grateful. I understand. It's not, it's not teaching you to be under pressure. But please make sure your life extends to somebody. You have to do something to someone in the name of the Lord. And they don't just have to be your relatives. In the first parable, the first service, we spoke about the Samaritan who came to a perfect stranger. I've had the privilege and the honor to do things for people that I do not know and I may never know in this life. And I left them dumbfounded wondering. Who are you? Some say you are an angel. Say, no, no, I'm not an angel. Not an angel. I'm a human being. I have my birth certificate. I was born by a woman. I just have subscribed to a kingdom culture. A kingdom culture. A kingdom culture. Never will it be that I will live my life and not be a blessing to someone. And that if God has shown you mercy, I say it again, except you are not a recipient of the mercy of God. If God has shown you mercy, if God has shown you kindness, if God has brought you deliverance, remember where God picked you from. Do not allow the blessedness of the palace to erode the memory. Esther! Remember that you were once in Shushan, a village girl. Now that you have come to the palace, the, the agenda has not finished. Don't enjoy the palace and forget that Haman is plotting against the Jews. Could it be that it was for such a time you have come? If Esther made a mistake and ignored Mordecai, I assure you something would have happened that would make the king deal with her. I do not want to program woes in my life. By reason of being unmerciful. Hallelujah. I'll tell you one testimony and then we'll pray. I receive a lot of calls and text messages, and, and I'm sure that um, sometimes I don't even have the energy and the time to respond to them. But I remember this person who kept reaching me and said, Apostle, you must pray for me. I mean, this lady sent scriptures from the woman with the issue of blood, the woman who told the, 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 the uh, um, avenge me, my adversaries, all those scriptures, apostle, you must call. And at a point she said, you are a man of God, God did this and that, and I, I was so tired. I don't know what took my eyes to that text. And the Holy Spirit told me, this lady is wounded and broken. Call her and pray with her. When I called her, she was first shouting for almost two minutes. You would have said, Me, my credit, I'm calling you now after this thing. Apostle, you called me. And then eventually we spoke and I prayed with her. I didn't know that she was related to someone that I would later meet. And she had gone ahead to tell that person very nice things about me. And when I did meet that person, he blessed me in a way that surprised me. Because of the speed of mercy. Do not... Ignore how far the seeds you are sowing can go for your future. You can do something nice and kind to someone today. And tomorrow it will speak in your life. It will speak in the life of your children and your children's children. Are we blessed? Your pastor and his wife 
are two wonderful people they are so dear to me and we've built a little relationship for a few years and i can tell you they have been awesome people awesome people i it's not just because of the church service i love your pastor i love his wife with all my heart and i'm telling you as far as it is within my power there is nothing within my power by the grace of god that i cannot do to show love and honor to your pastor believe me i'm careful with words apostle what of me i don't know i can't make that guarantee about you it takes a while it takes a while even with god the same lord is rich unto all but there are people because of the depth of their passion god has branded his dealing with them he does not deal with them casually he has created a name for his dealing with them they call upon him he will show up are we ready to pray very simple service very simple parable the unmerciful servant which one of the two are you are you the king showing mercy because you have received mercy yourself are you the unprof the, 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 the unmerciful servant who obtained mercy for so much and yet ran and went to another person and was glad and happy to strangle that person I will be an instrument of mercy I will be an instrument of mercy Your father and your mother Are fighting for whatever reason And you are happy To not be the referee You ring the bell and you stand back And you are happy To watch them box one another and while that is happening you are enjoying it you even video camera it and you say wow this is amazing i never knew my mother was this strong there is a cloud of witnesses watching remember one day you have children isn't it amazing that most of the things we do not desire in others we we pray that it shouldn't happen to them for good they are also the things we desire you don't want someone to get a job yet you are praying that god will give you a job you don't want someone to get married yet you are desperately looking for a wife or for a husband you must sow seeds of mercy you cannot insult everybody's marriage tear them down hate them and go back in secret and say lord when will my husband come when will my wife come you are crying for a harvest whose seed you have not sown you want to start ministry yet you look at every pastor and insult him this one is not very anointed this one is just an administrator this one has revelation this one is not very fine this one is he's like this it is not and while you are saying that you say oh god where are my sheep where are my flock and god says me my sheep trust you with you will kill all the sheep everything you dishonor in God and in others you have programmed that that thing should never manifest in your life how many people see wealthy people and in, insult them everywhere this wicked man you should help me and the man has written a book that should help you to be wealthy you refuse to read it and say just keep giving me money and then you close the door of wealth then you close the door of the knowledge of God then you close the door of impact you close the door of influence please make up your mind from this service that everything God has helped you out of you will become an instrument of mercy to others are we together now yes once upon a time you were not doing well in school and God helped you someone was patient enough with you to help you walk you through Wayek walk you through everything and now you're a phd holder or a master's holder or a professor or you have your degree don't be too quick to look at someone and say you are so dull simple something you cannot understand remember remember and be patient remember this is also to lead us be patient with people listen the people we lead are also growing the people we lead are like children 
they will make mistakes they will do a lot of foolish things we must be able to extend the hand of mercy the excellency of leadership and maturity is having the, the understanding to be able to see people and discern their frailty and walk them through their growth process until they become strong and able themselves when I was a child the Bible says I thought like a child I spoke like a child I understood like a child he said now that I'm a man I've laid aside these childish things so forbear with people forbear with them make up your mind that there are things that you will just be quiet about someone eats your food be quiet about it someone hits your car sometimes you just have to be quiet someone stole your cloth no problem it's not everything you talk about sustain the maturity to be quiet now I've, I've told you it will make you feel cheap it will make you feel weak it will make you feel foolish but let the king send for you when he sends for you he will send for you to beautify your life he will send for you to bring you honor he will send for you to lift you the king does not send for people to bring them down provided they have sown the seed of mercy do not expect help when you don't help others don't call destiny helpers when you are not one yourself don't be praying and say god bring the helpers of my destiny because someone has been calling you in his prayer and you have refused to answer that prayer too do not say lord send me people to lift me when you are not a lifter yourself do not say send people to strengthen me spiritually when you are not helping another do not say send me people to protect me and bless me when you are not there no it is what you are sowing that you pray for the harvest to come are we blessed yes. don't ask that people should be committed to your company when you are not committed in church you are not giving your best you do what you do grudgingly and yet you are saying lord let my company expand no god on Lindsay, christ for the nations i say this in conclusion christ for the nations many of you would have studied him he's, he's long uh, he's gone to be with the lord now that man lived very long and he lived an impactful life and the secret was because he was not interested in ministry he spent his life supporting the lifting of many if he heard that you were in ministry and he had the opportunity he would lift you he would help you he would lift you and one day god said no even though it may not be that you are interested in ministry your heart is too right for me to ignore you and he drew him and he started christ for the nations study the history of great generals most of them were not interested in ministry they wanted to be helpers they wanted to sow seeds of mercy lord where do i find tears use my hands to clean the tears where do i find joy let me join in celebrating where do i find the weak and the downcast let me sow that seed of mercy when jesus was hanging at the cross where were the people who ate his bread where were the people who drank where were the people who ate the fish where was the woman with the issue of blood when jesus was on the cross where was the woman whose withered hand was healed when jesus was on the jesus took a risk and blessed this woman yet he's hanging on that cross and only two people john and his mother and two thieves who were talking anyhow on the tree one of them was open and the other one was foolish and he told one he said this day you will be with me in paradise the question is where were they where was the 12 year old girl who was raised from the dead where were her parents didn't they hear the news that jesus was going to the cross let me tell you where they were they were part of those who stood and said crucify him and jesus was looking at them and they were looking yes you are looking at me crucify him let his blood be on our children they didn't know what they were saying And yet there was a man called Simon of Cyrene. He said, I may be a black man. I may not be wealthy. I may not have influence. But Jesus, can I carry your cross with you? May God bring this kind of people to your life. And may God make you one and take to the life of others too. In the name of Jesus. Imagine the relief carrying that cross for Jesus. The Bible may not have written it. But I assure you. I believe that when we get to heaven, there has to be a reward for Simon of Cyrene. 
for that which he did. What of Joseph of Arimathea? Who brought the body of Jesus down and kept in his tomb? Seeds of mercy. Seeds of mercy. Do not be part of the pain of people. Do not be part of the bleeding of people. Make sure you become instruments of mercy and instruments of love. You see your loved ones crying. They are telling you my marriage is not working. Don't be the one to say, I told you. I said don't marry that wife. You didn't listen. I said, oh, he has already married. What should he do about it? You, you come there and wrap your arms around them. And say, look, we have, we, have, we have also experienced this thing. But now we are standing by you and we are praying. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, if you don't succeed in any other thing in your life again, and you can leave sowing seeds of mercy, I guarantee you that you will not be a failure in life. There will be people who will arise to plead your case. There will be people who will arise to show you mercy. My encouragement for all of us online listening and all who are seated here, is do not be like your merciful servant the lord jesus christ has shown us mercy i didn't do an altar call in the first service if i can plead with you pastor to just let me two minutes i just felt stirred in my spirit i'll be praying for people in the third service but right now you are seated there are two categories of people i'll call you quickly number one there are people who are saying apostle i've not even received this mercy from god I am yet to truly make a genuine commitment. I've been attending church. I've been doing a lot of things. I've even been involved in helping to organize crusades. But I really want to mean business with Jesus. The second category of people, they are saying, Apostle, I'm carrying loads that I'm not interested in again. Bitterness, unforgiveness, pain in my heart is obstructing my Christian experience. And like the woman with the alabaster box, I came to church this morning and I want to lay it down. Wherever you are, if you do come out, please do your best to maintain the social distance. But I need you to come out quickly. One minute. Please leave your seat and come very quickly. Leave your seat and come quickly. Someone is bold enough to come stand here. If you're, if you're making a decision for Jesus, come stand at my right. Very quickly. Very quickly. Household of David, this is the best you can do. Keep coming. Don't mind who is looking at you and who is not looking at you. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your own. Blow, blow, take. Blow, blow. Blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. One more time. Blow, 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 blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Listen to me. Everyone must have a day in his life where he comes to Jesus Genuinely and sincerely The Bible says whoever calls upon the name of the Lord He will be saved It's like calling you to come and receive an award You are not coming to a funeral You are coming to receive what silver and gold cannot buy I want to pray that prayer for those of you who are Surrendering your heart sincerely I'd like you to pray this prayer Let it be from the depth of your heart Even if you are rededicating your life Say Lord Jesus I love you And I believe in you That you are the son of God Today I receive of your life I receive the abundance of grace And the gift of righteousness I also receive forgiveness of sin Wash me, cleanse me, give me a new beginning. I declare that from today and forever, the power of sin 
the power of Satan, the power of the grave is broken over my life. I declare that I walk in victory from today and forever. Forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus. Now let me quickly pray for those who are here trusting God to just throw away burdens. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. There is a participatory effort. You are going to have to summon the courage. Some of you may need to just have that courage to say in the name of Jesus, I don't have room for unforgiveness again. I've been shown the mercy of God. I've been shown the grace of God. I don't have room for resentment and any of this. I am a partaker of God's mercy and I will extend the same to my family, my mother, my sister, my brothers, my co-workers at work. In the name of Jesus, I release the grace. It's a painful decision, but I prophesy to you, let the grace of God that helps you. In the name of Jesus, there is an empowerment coming from the Spirit. The same grace that made Stephen to look at the people stoning him and yet forgive them. The same grace that made Jesus even on the cross to be able to look at the people and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I release grace upon you to walk past the limitations, the foolishness, the childishness, the immaturity of people in the name of Jesus. And that at this wind of mercy conference, let this be a decision that starts a moment of victory in your life. For some of you, it's towards your husband. For some of you, it's towards your wife. Some of you, towards your parents. In the name of Jesus, I break the spirit that is behind unforgiveness. I break the spirit that is behind bitterness. I break the spirit that is behind limitations. And every seed that has been sown in your life here at Household of David, we release you right now in the name of Jesus. Experience victory, supernatural victory in the name of Jesus. Experience victory. Ex help that woman, please. Experience victory in the name of Jesus. I release you by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will never be a victim. Please help this man. I'm praying for you. We are wrapping up. In the name of Jesus, let the anointing of the Spirit break the spirits that are behind unforgiveness. The spirits that are behind bitterness. The spirits that have tied your destiny down. In the name of Jesus, be released from their influence. I declare that from this service, enjoy the newness of life. From this service, let your health be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord himself will show you kindness You have obtained mercy from God You have obtained mercy from men Now be an extension of the same to everyone around you In the name of Jesus Christ The Lord bless you, the Lord honor you Amen Now please look A form, a form um, There the are officials that are giving you a form What will happen is you will fill it Are they going anywhere? Okay, you will go back you go back to your seat and in, in one or two minutes, please just fill the form given to you very legibly. When you fill it, you can just wave it. An official will come and receive it. May the Lord bless you. Please return to your seat and the Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Is someone praying? Open my eyes, grant me the grace to see. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom reign in us. Let the weight of your glory, let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom reign. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your
I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me of the living God we ask you tonight to grant us illumination we have come as seekers of your presence we have come as desperate people searching for understanding we pray in the name of Jesus that you will breathe upon our hearts tonight grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ amen please be seated please be seated God bless you We'll have a very brief session this is a session for ministers and i'm honored to be bringing god's word um, it's important that um, we sustain an understanding Sorry. To sustain an understanding of what the Holy Spirit is doing I have, I think I've taught it here But let me start tonight by explaining that, that There are three levels of the anointing There is the first level that comes upon a man By reason of your being grafted into Christ the Bible says he that is joined to Christ is one spirit so when we come through the door of salvation there is a measure of the investment of God's grace and power that is upon our lives then the second level is the level that comes in honor to the office that you occupy this is not necessarily a product of your personal spiritual life it is in honor the office you have been given to serve the purposes of the kingdom there is an engracing that comes praise the lord then there is the third level of the anointing it is the anointing that doesn't just come because you are born again it doesn't just come because you are occupying a relevant office in the spirit it comes in honor to the sacrifice of alignment to understand what God is doing per season, per time. That is the anointing that seems to make certain people so relevant. Please listen carefully. In certain seasons, you would have noticed that it looks like there is a circle of relevance. And then you find out that at a particular season It looks like there are certain individuals That just stand out as far as their contribution to the body of Christ is concerned Then other seasons you find out that it looks like Those people who were once relevant They don't seem to be carrying that degree of fire and relevance And you find out that newer people come but it looks like there are a few people For as long as they are alive It looks like there is nothing God does without them No matter what season No matter the age People rise and go down Moves of God come and go And it looks like these people have found a secret with God That keeps them ever fresh The anointing is solidly behind them It is because these people have moved past the realm of just being born again they have even moved past the realm of being men and women of god they have become seekers of his presence they want to know what god is doing part time and to say lord if per adventure you ever need a man 
to be relevant in your program i am available i'm not interested in just being a man of god i'm not even just interested in being born again and a christian i want to be a true seeker of your presence this kind of people will receive an anointing beyond just that which they get from the salvation experience beyond that which they get as a result of their office it is a grace that keeps them both relevant and very useful i like you to pray and say father what you are seeking to drop on men in this end time let it not pass me let it not be that i was relevant in your program yesterday please volume please in the name of jesus let it be let it be by the spirit of god Shalanda braskete bahashada brandos ya tabaratos kia zeparus kada balandos kalebariata. Someone is praying. Let it not be that I was once used by God. Let it not be that I was once anointed. Let it not be that I was once useful as far as the program of God is concerned. Set my life on fire for you, for you, oh Lord, would you put my life in order for you, are you praying for you, I want to know you. I want to know your ways. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to start. It will be very brief tonight. Please, can you look for another sound? Someone help my keyboardist. Please, just, just get him strings so that he will play. This, you have to be very sensitive in the spirit this night. Amen. No, sometimes these things, these sounds are not just ordinary music. They are languages in the spirit. The psalmist said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. And one wrong sound can interrupt the flow of the spirit. And so sometimes, please bear when we, it looks like we are getting too sensitive. Sometimes the kind of grace that God puts upon you, it demands certain atmospheres and you must keep insisting until the atmosphere is right. Praise the Lord. I had a vision and I'm very careful when I'm speaking to the body of Christ on experiences. I'm not one person who just comes up and says, I saw this, God said that. But I had a vision and I'm glad that I shared a bit of it with um, Pastor earlier on. In that vision, I saw a denomination in this nation that has been neglected for many years. I saw light returning to a house and I saw the name of the denomination I will not mention it for the sake of honor and I saw the light of God returning back there was a covenant God had with the fathers of that denomination and God is returning with his power to honor that covenant this is a vision that I saw I was amazed because it's not a usual denomination that people would want to but when I saw this I said my God this God eh, is truly a covenant keeping God so let it not surprise you when you begin to see strange people rise from unusual denominations carrying the spirit and the power of God in unusual ways the move of God in the end times will require flexibility you are going to have to open up your heart to discern are we together now I just thought that I needed to share this it was amazing I saw the light it came into that house and I saw the name of the denomination and I understood that the Spirit of God was coming again to visit people God is still searching for men 
please do not allow what God is doing with our lives the little here and there to get us proud to think he has stopped looking for men God is still looking for men he is moving from city to city family to family thank God for the little that we are doing but there is much to be done and I'm telling you God is still seeking men he will come to them in dreams he will come to them in visions he will visit them from the womb of their mothers there are still mighty people that God is raising and so we the, the up front let's kill the spirit of complacency the arrival mentality that bedevils people and makes them to not last there must be a perpetual hunger as though you are just starting are we blessed in one minute i'd like us to pray over this vision that i saw i just felt it in my spirit to share it i may not mention the name of the denomination but we are going to say lord come let revival come that which you intend to do in this nation please hear me there will be strange visitations it will no longer be stories our fathers told us this one happened that one happened these were mighty men and women of god god is revisiting our nation revisiting the continent of africa once again out of the ashes of all that is happening within this nation is a birthing of something superior and powerful are there leaders who pray please lift your voice and let us pray let it be from the depth of our hearts Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll begin my teaching now. When God made man, the Bible tells us that the voice of God would come in the cool of the day to visit man and to play the role of oversight over everything God had given man and then the Bible says one time when Adam and Eve they had you know eaten of the forbidden fruit and all of that the Bible says and he heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day and he asked a question that by God's grace will answer it says Adam where are you Adam where there is a position of relevance that I kept you in the garden but from my standpoint I no longer see you there Adam where are you where are you in the position of things I appointed you and made you head over all things Paul was speaking to the church in Hebrews that he made all things above man I mean man above all things and in doing so he did not leave anything that was not under his feet and now he's saying Adam where art thou and Adam answered a question that in the name of Jesus God would do he, he answered he said I heard your voice but I hid and the reason why I hid is because nakedness has come to me something has happened your glory has departed from my life and it has produced nakedness I know that I am vulnerable outside of that glory and so I have reason to hide Adam where art thou where are you in the move of things that prophecy was upon your life that in the end time move of the spirit you will be relevant and you will be part of it and God is saying I see the prophet in this city I see the apostle but from the realm of the spirit your seat is empty where are you pastor where are thou prophet where are thou the end time move of God please listen I know that we have heard people say it again and again that there is coming a move of God a move of the spirit and sometimes these things just sound like Pentecostal and charismatic cliches by zealous people who love God but there is a real move of God our fathers died seeing that move 
in visions they never saw it manifest in their lifetime but they left us a prophecy that surely God is coming again Maranatha come Lord Jesus visit your people in a mighty way again and God is beginning to prepare us you see we must learn to read the handwritings on the wall learn to interpret occurrences on earth and occurrences in life from the standpoint of God's program and with the intelligence of the spirit if our scope of interpretation just becomes scientific or sociological we will not be able to capture the details of the dealings of God past season are we together now from the pandemic to the economy of nations to what is happening all around the body of Christ and the government of nations these shakings are writings on the wall and it will take people who have the eyes to see to be able to read the writings on the wall and understand that this is what God is saying and also to hear the sound of the Spirit the Bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches so there is coming a move of God and I am telling you God has begun to handpick people please hear me I'm speaking to you prophetically you will think that just because God used you yesterday he will use you tomorrow that is a big mistake God is touching and picking there is a formation of a very invincible army that God is raising it's not just a song the Spirit of God is hovering around churches families denominations hovering around nations hovering around villages hovering around places and searching for a type of people I want us to deal with this it's not just searching for Christians there are many Christians on earth well-meaning born-again Christians but it is it will take more than just being a Christian to be part of the program of God my assignment tonight within the few minutes that we have is to help open our eyes to the demands that can posture us to be mightily used by God in our churches in our ministry whatever ministerial context where we are involved in and it is very very important it is dangerous for you to fade in your lifetime to know you are still alive and yet God is not doing anything with you again the illusion that God owes us his presence and he owes to use us regardless of our participation is not a correct doctrine even your salvation did not come to you by force there was a participatory role and every once and again God will make a demand are you still interested I am moving you don't just say yes by verbalizing it your hunger your desperation your your prioritization your intention is what qualifies you as you jump from one move of God to another please someone pray where you are Lord I am still relevant don't replace me I am still relevant in the ministry of chemistry, in the prophetic ministry, in the apostolic ministry. In the name of Jesus, someone is praying. Those following from every nation, pray. Lift your voice. Lord, I'm still interested in being part of your program. It is within your power to replace me. But let your message speak over my life, speak over my church. We are praying in the name of Jesus. It is within your power to raise greater worshippers in this season. But Lord, let my voice contribute to kingdom come. Let the sounds of the Spirit not elude me, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, someone is praying. Lord, you are searching for prophets. You are raising people from the donkey and from the ashes. Do not pass my family. Do not pass my church. I verbalize my interest. I verbalize my passion. You are still searching for men and women that you will trust with the wealth of the kingdom. You are still searching for men and women 
that will be relevant within the context of your program. Find me, O God. Pray for your children. Find my son, O God. Find my daughter, O God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give me a few minutes. Please look up. I'm going to break this teaching into three. That the end time move of God will require an understanding of number one, the vessel. Number two, the mandate. Number three, the strategy. The end time move of God will require an understanding of the kind of man God is looking for. God loves everybody and He desires that all men be saved. But as far as being used by God is concerned, brothers and sisters, please hear me. There are real requirements. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are things that would demand obedience. There are things that would demand sacrifice. The vessel, the mandate, and the strategy. Knowing the kind of man God is seeking. Listen, when there is a recruitment, for many of you who are involved in recruitment or you've recruited people in your companies, they would state very clearly that we are looking for certain kinds of people. Is that true? five years experience in this and that it will be an added advantage they will say if you are multi bilingual they will tell you it will be an added advantage if you have this and that so they state all of that there are people who come to look at it and pass they know this does not concern me it's none of my business but there are others the moment they see it is as if they just called you and you go and apply and when the people test your proficiency some of them are so impressed they can bring you in and not even allow you go out again that is the same way it happens in the realm of the spirit who shall we send and who shall go for us from chapter 1 to chapter 5 isaiah was already a prophet he was prophesying already but the bible says in chapter 6 and verse 1 in the year that king uzziah died i isaiah although a prophet a true one and a major prophet i saw the lord and he said i saw him sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple give us verse 2 he says Above it stood seraphims with six wings, and they covered their face and their feet. Verse 3. When Isaiah saw this, they cried to one another, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. 4. It says, And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with that Shekinah. He called it smoke, but we know that. It is not earthly fire that produces that kind of smoke. It is the fragrance that comes when people encounter the God of heaven. Verse 5. It says, Then I said, Notice God didn't tell him you are unclean. No. He said to himself, This is not condemnation. This is not condemnation. This is transformation. Woe is me for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. If someone had walked to Isaiah and said, Isaiah, you are a man of unclean lips. you think Isaiah would say, I agree? No, sir. There is a dimension of the glory of God you encounter that swallows all your achievements and the applause of men. They, they don't have to tell you, you are great, you are a man of God. You would thank them with one hand. But with the other hand, you are saying, Lord, show me what else. The demands for higher levels of your glory. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Verse 6. I'm going somewhere. Listen. Then flew one of the seraphims, having a live coal, and had taken it with the tongues from the altar. Can you imagine? God would have said, oh, you are so humble. That's, that's too much humility. They took the coal because what he was saying was true. He took the live coal, laid it on his mouth and said, This had touched thy lips and thy iniquity is taken from you and thy sin purged. Verse 8. 
Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Isaiah was still doing ministry, whereas in the realm of the spirit there was still a vacancy. Who shall we send? Churches are being built, but God is saying, Who shall we send? Conferences are still going on. I hope you know I'm speaking respectfully. That there are ministerial activities happening on earth. Worship, conferences, Apostle Joshua Selman moving around and preaching, whereas heaven is still saying, Who shall we send? There is still a kind of man we are looking for. God is saying, I have found preachers. I have found men of God. I have found orators. I have found good speakers. I have found wonderful administrators. I have found learned people who went to school. But who shall we send? It is a consultation that is going on in the realm of the spirit. What is the quality that God is looking for? Isaiah was a prophet. You know what it takes to be a prophet? And yet the prophet is prophesying. Not a fake prophecy. And in heaven there is still a call. It is amazing. I pray for you and I pray for myself too as I pray for you. Let it never be that while we are doing what we are doing on earth, heaven is still saying, who will take this bishopric? It says, this bishopric, let another take. Take seriously what you are hearing tonight. Every time the sword of the Spirit is released over nations, it's for the rising and the falling of many. God does not destroy, but God is too serious about his agenda to allow the intentional, continual carelessness of any vessel to interrupt his program indefinitely. God loves you, but if you become a consistent interruption, he will be forced to find people. Because while you are wasting the anointing and wasting the time in pride, someone is in the secret place saying, Lord, I am available. And that contrast will not last for too long. The Spirit of God will come and pick that person and do mighty things with that person. If you are with me, please say Amen. Amen. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And then Isaiah said, Here am I. Send me. You are tempted to ask who sent him from chapter 1 to chapter 5. The man who was sent in chapter 1 to 5 is not the one who is sent here in chapter 6. This is a new man. Send me. Send me with a new anointing. Not, not, not 2019 grace. Not 2018 sermon. Uh, between that year and now, something happened to me. I've met the Lord. Something has touched my tongue. Something has touched my life. Ah! You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life must change. You will never be the same. I've touched your grace. I, 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 I. There is a kind of man that God is searching for. Let me tell you, God is not looking for a musician. God is not looking for a pastor. God is not looking for an apostle. God is not looking for a prophet. God is not looking for just a good administrator. There is a type of man. And the Spirit of God will not rest until he finds such a people. And my assignment is to help us by the Spirit to become such people. To assume that posture that makes it impossible. The same way Ahasuerus could not resist Esther. Because there was a preparation. There was a kind of preparation that Esther went through for one year. When she stood before Ahasuerus. He knew that this was the kind of person. And she became his bride and saved the people of God. Your relevance is not only dependent on the love of God for you. It is dependent on your sacrifice of becoming that vessel. The process, the painstaking process of transformation that turns you into the version of you 
that God is looking for. Psalm 139 and verse 23. Wherever we stop tonight, we pray. Search me, O God. This is David. And know my heart. It says, try me and know my thoughts. 24. And see with your all seeing eye. If there be any wicked way in me. Then lead me to the way everlasting. This is a man who is standing before God with sincerity. He's standing before God with truthfulness. And he's saying, Lord, I'm not ashamed of what you will find in my heart. Touch my heart. He says, try my thoughts. Probe it. If you find any wicked way in me, redeem me. Lead me to the way everlasting. Remember what we are dealing with now, the vessel. It's amazing that many people believe that the kinds of vessels that God will use are just people who are educated or just people who are beautiful or handsome or wealthy or even people who come from the lineage of preachers. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But the Bible is full of the strange way God chooses men. When it was time for God to choose the 12 disciples who would later become apostles of the Lamb, there were scribes, there were Pharisees, there were all kinds of people. He fasted all night and looked the kind of disaster he chose to be his disciples. Met a man fishing and he said, Leave your fish, you come and follow me. Met all kinds of people. Nathaniel laughed at him. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And yet he looks at Nathaniel and says, An Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. So what is God really looking for? Are we blessed? Psalm 51 verse 17. The sacrifices, read together please. The sacrifices of God are what? Not an offering. Not a fat offering. As important as that is. The sacrifice of God is not even your singing. It's not your talent. Uh -uh. The sacrifice of God is not your certificate. It says a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, there is something in you that cannot despise brokenness. Please listen. It is within your nature to respond to broken people. You know what brokenness is? A state of openness and contriteness. Where you bring yourself to a point where you say, God, without you I am not in. Don't mind the applause of people and every thank God for what they are doing. But that you get to a point where you say, Lord, the definition of death is my life without you. The definition of relevance is my life with you. No matter what else leaves my life, if you are there, I have everything. And God says, is this what you are saying? In spite of your certificate, yes sir. In spite of your fame, yes sir. The Bible says a broken spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, men and women of God watching world over, this is what God has been searching for from generation to generation. Do not think this requirement is that easy. If it were that easy, many people would be in the program of God. One of the hardest things for a believer to do is to be broken. Brokenness will sting your ego. Brokenness will kill everything that is life in you until you are left with nothing. A broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. So he finds a stammerer called Moses. And in spite of the fact that there were many other people he was still willing to make do with Moses. And the Bible calls him the meekest man. There was something he found in Moses. 
Then when he found Joshua, he began to admonish him. There was something he saw in Esther Hadassah. That even though she was a village girl, when he found it, he said, I will ensure you get to the throne. It is brokenness that gets the job done. Please listen to me. Much more than your talent, much more than your preaching, much more than organization of ministry, I believe that and I respect it. But nothing, not even prayer and fasting, not even Bible study will replace the place of genuine brokenness. Let me show you what brokenness looks like. This is brokenness. Oh God, if you do not lift me, I cannot be lifted. If you are not my song, I cannot sing. If you are not my crown, I cannot wear anything. And while men are clapping for you, please take what I'm saying seriously. Great man, great woman, your knees. Do you know the higher you rise, the farther your knees are from the ground. You have to find a way of keeping these knees on the ground. To say, Lord, they call me their man of God, but I am still your boy. I am still that young shepherd that you carried in the wilderness. I will not allow the beauty of the palace to deceive me. I will not allow the excellency of the aloes of kings to make me forget the scars that came from the wilderness. And while you are saying that, heaven is looking at a man who has qualified for the next move of God. You may not be able to speak all the English you can. You may not even have all the influence. And while men are saying you don't fit this position, this lady is not, I, I wish she was a better singer. God says that is your business. I have found what I have found. Young lady, let's go to the next level of the move of God. And you, that's why you wonder why certain people don't fit certain qualifications based on the parameters created by men. But it looks like God cannot do it. Without them, while we are there with our pride, like Eliab, believing it's impossible for God to have a move without me. And God tells you that He takes the foolish things. This is how some of us came on board. Though. We didn't come on board by the wisdom of men, we didn't come on board by the connections of people, we didn't have any default system of advantage, but we took our frail and fragile heart and said your majesty if you will ever find any relevance let us present our heart and our lives to you as a trophy if there is any way you can use this vessel to bring glory to your name and he says you are doing this for me let's go when God holds you woe betides the man who stands on the journey when God is the one holding you are we blessed the kind of vessel God is looking for in this time. I'm saying this respectfully. Preachers, hear me. I love the body of Christ and I speak apostolically. But we need to be careful. Because we are gradually deviating from the things that are major to the things that are minor. I believe in excellence. I believe in quality administration. I believe in training yourself intellectually. But please... In all your doing, do not forget that those things only find their relevance and their credence when there is a track record of genuine brokenness. It's one thing to speak, but it's another thing for His Majesty to take your voice and cause the nations to hear it. There are no gimmicks with God if it is not genuine hunger and passion. Are we together now? You can get to a point in your life where the only reason why you study is because of your ego. Because you have preaching to do. You have a preaching engagement. And so you have to quickly study. But the passion is not there. And while all that nonsense is happening on earth, God is watching. And you know, the deception with ministry is that while that is happening, the sound of the applause of men. I'm not saying their applause are not good, but they can be so deceptive. My God, what a powerful message. You brought this Rema and you know, you know 
that what was happening on that stage was purely the mercy of God. And most times we enjoy that attention. We enjoy that stage light. We enjoy that sense of fame. And we are even ashamed to say, Lord, we give you the glory. We just say it religiously. But the truth is we want to savor the moment. And heaven is watching. The thing with God is he can suffer long. He just keeps watching. And then we begin to mentor people after our pride and deception. And we begin to raise people in ministry who are ashamed to give glory to God. They start following us in the name of mentorship. And we, when God sees that you are, your misleading is becoming generational, you are calling the attention of heaven. He has to come and say, no, no, no. I love you too much. And I love my program too much to allow you be the basis for the fearing of, of many. And God will honor you for what you have done so far. But you will find out that he begins to raise other people as a continuation. One more time pray and say, Lord, what is it that can stop me from being relevant in your program? Someone is crying to the God of heaven. What is it, O oh God? Lift your voice and pray. Cry to your maker. Cry to your maker. The lover of your soul, the helper of men. The vessel, the vessel. Grant me a heart condition that is ever broken, ever contrite. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the honor that comes with ministry. But Lord, I know that you are searching for a kind of man. Not just one who will give you glory. One who is genuinely broken. Your heart must change. Your heart must change. Your heart must change. Your heart must change. My heart must change. My heart must change. Hallelujah. By the grace of God and with all humility, I'm a student of revival. I have studied the moves of God in this country, in Africa, and as far as I can find. In a bid to piece together, I have read many books about revivals and the moves of God. And I thank God for the privilege to have met a few people who have been part of the program of God. And I've had the rare opportunity to sit down one on one with them, to buy into their minds. What business did you do with God? that gave you that access i can tell you this many of them will answer in different ways but the underlying factor is that there was something about brokenness you know one time i heard a lot of preachers talk about william branham great general of god and what made me concerned was the extent to which people were castigating the man Oh, he left God towards the end of his life. He got into heresy. And I said, come on, be, be, be. is that all you saw about the man? And that, that drew me to study the man. And I was watching one of his videos. And I could see and discern the level of purity in this man's heart. And I said, over 99% of the people who are talking to this man do not come close to the level of hunger and sacrifice that this man has towards God. You know, I was listening with all my heart. I didn't used to prophesy so much. Of course, I could have word of knowledge and all of that. But it, that, that grace was not really, really at work in my life. And while I was watching him, I said, But this man, look at the kind of dishonor that people have had. Or this. He may have had his issues, but until you carry what is on him, that's when you will know the burden it takes to carry that kind of generational grace. Do you know while I was watching, tears started coming out of my eyes and then suddenly it was like something left the screen and a cold substance just rested upon my head and started going down over a period of about 30 minutes like a cold sensation in my body 
Of course, I knew it was the Holy Ghost doing something. And I said, what is happening to me? And at the end of that time, the next meeting I went to, I was surprised the way the prophetic opened for me. I said, this is it. That grace has been searching for people. Do you know there are mantles moving from city to city? Searching. Searching for people. It will come to a church and pride will drive it. It will come to a family and lust will drive it. It will come to a place and tradition and religion will drive it. Who shall I send and who shall go for us? Household of David and the body of Christ listening. It's time for us to reduce activities and go back to seeking his presence genuinely until we find what is worth our coming out you don't come out because you want to come out you come out because you have met him genuinely genuinely when isaiah met him he said here i am send me and he said when i sent you lackest thou anything not when you went hallelujah do not get into the illusion that just because there are many activities there is progress no you must contend for spiritual efficiency that every time you come out there will be a deposit of the spirit in and through your life that can last for generations and i believe that this is what god is doing in this church i said with your pastor already by the spirit i believe with all my heart that there is a prophetic contribution that household of david has to bring to the body of christ in this city and around i say this thing not because i'm standing on the stage i have told him privately hear me pastor hear me man of god overseer the spirit of god will continue to move through parishes and cathedrals through churches and places of worship he's not just searching for christians when he comes he's looking for that heart can he find that as a result of this conference can you go back home and say spirit of god i'm available i may not have been that available yesterday notice the question is not whether you are a ministry or not ministry can become an idol that drives the presence of god from your life Is God speaking to us? Presence of God. You can fake power, but you cannot fake the reality of His presence. No. There is a signature that He signs by Himself when you truly encounter Him. And He will deposit something upon your life that you can take to the nations and they will be blessed. We must get tired of preaching and once we are done people, In five minutes after our preaching People cannot remember what we said again Because there was no presence That presence factor is not there We raise worship songs Powerful worship songs And the moment people are done singing They just say wow you are, you are, you are a very powerful artist that, that is not a compliment that we get to a point where you are so in sync with God someone is sitting in the congregation with cancer and you lift up your voice one shout of hallelujah from your secret place to his body ejecting everything that does not look like the counsel of God that you preach a message and for two years that message has not left the person it may even be a scripture have you had times when a line of a message or a point has stuck to your heart for weeks? Have you had times when you read only one verse? That's your devotional for many days. I've made up my mind that for as long as I have the privilege of life, whatever it would take, whatever it would take to see to it that my life becomes an instance of worship, a contribution for me i've come to a point like the apostle will say where to live is christ and to die is gain nobody runs away from gain that the life that i now live i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me 
and gave himself for me so we need to go back and begin to edit the purity of our motivations what is motivating the conferences what is motivating the meetings what is motivating i want to start a church i agree what is motivating it all my colleagues are in ministry and i don't think i should at my age i should not be like this without a church someone advised me to start a platform that is a sincere advice from a well-meaning friend but you're on your way to a thorough destruction who shall we send the first question is not send me it's here am i that here am i is a long process when it's done with you he now sends you notice the woman with the alabaster box remember the story the bible said she had a box of spikenard a year's worth of wages she brought it before the feet of the master she didn't pour some she broke everything that alabaster box was a symbol of her worth it was a symbol of her pain it was a symbol of her honor it was a symbol of her glory and she knelt before his feet and said if it is to break everything that represents my relevance let me tell you why our fathers saw what we are not seeing they were willing to give up what we are not willing to give up we are too conscious of my money my car my reputation my ministry some of those people were not even interested in ministry they were strolling around the forest and the power of god rested on them they were not interested in fame Today we fight one another He's supposed to call me apostle And he called me Joshua Selman That becomes a vendetta for many years Wasting time and energy That should be spent seeking the presence of God You will never be the same You've touched His grace Your life must change You will never be the same you touch your grace, your life was changed. Number two, if I stop here, that's all. Okay. We spoke about the vessel. That is the most important part of ministry, the vessel. Number two, the mandate. Those who will be used to do mighty things in this kingdom must understand the mandates that god has committed are we together now yes when you have a company or a corporation you send people to represent you to the degree to which they understand what you stand for nobody will send someone who is still in confusion as to what the company or the products represent you are not going to send someone to go and speak for you when that person does not even understand can he answer the questions that will arise on account of what the representation are we together now imagine that someone came to sell you say a gadget and he said i represent xyz company then you ask them why should i buy your product because there are other options and he says well look they just sent me they i they sent me to market i need to get my own commission that's not a good marketer the mandate matthew chapter 10 please 7 and 8 matthew 10 7 and 8 please help us matthew 10 7 and 8 we're going to pray let me open it from here okay now this is jesus sending his disciples this is this was like a, a spiritual industrial training preparing them for the apostolic ministry that they would step into shortly and he said as ye go now notice the message comes when you are sent as ye go preach say the kingdom of heaven is within your reach and to prove that the kingdom of heaven is within your reach verse 8 heal the sick it's not a suggestion cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils you have received freely give freely this should be the entirety the body of the message that you take number two very quickly we have to rush mark 16 and verse 15 
Mark 16 and verse 15 And he said unto them Go ye into all the world And preach the gospel Not to every man To every creature That means there is a dimension of the gospel That is useful to plants and animals To animate and inanimate things There is a dimension of the gospel If properly preached It must affect creation Not just men because creation was also created by God Man is just the zenith of his creation Not the only The gospel Preached to every creature One last scripture Matthew 28 From verse 19 and 20 Matthew 28 from verse 19 Go ye therefore now Notice That the mandate always comes when he says Go if he has not instructed you to go Do you know just because God said come Does not mean he has said go God can say come I will use you But he has not released you to go You can say I've stayed too long I choose to go Congratulations just because you came The empowerment is as you go Not just as you come When he met the lepers They came but he said as you go The miracle begins to happen When the people with the wine The feast in Cana John 2 Remember he said fetch of these six pots And as they went The miracle always Is as you go So when you come he makes you Then he releases you With his power as you go He says go therefore and teach Now notice all of the other renditions say preach Now we are seeing another dimension of the gospel Teach all nations Baptizing them In the name of the Father And of the Son And of the Holy Ghost uh -huh. 20 It says teaching them to observe How many things? Teaching Use the ministry of teaching To bring them to a point where they pay attention To everything I have commanded you And while you do that Remember I am with you And the Lord walking with them Confirming the word With signs following Not the Lord staying with them Walking with them As they move to achieve this mandate Please listen to me I say this lovingly and respectfully But many men of God Do not understand the mandate Of a minister And this is not supposed to be an insult Sometimes the error Comes based on how we were mentored The first miracle In your life is to find A man of God over you Who loves God Then number two a man of God Who has sustained the ability To host whether by personal experience or by the humility of outsourcing The whole counsel of God And he can communicate such to you with balance and intelligence That way you are mentored in a way that makes you holistic and complete The first unbecoming of people Is the inability to sit under mentorship structures That can train them and allow them to experience the, the versatility, the counsel of God in his wholeness If you are trained under a pastor, for instance Who does not prioritize, say, soul winning and evangelism You will mold according to the mentorship And you will find out that when you have your own church Or whatever spiritual structure you oversee You will find out that no matter how you try in the flesh Something in you will betray you You will not have that passion for souls Because it was not part of your curriculum of training If you are mentored under a pastor That did not show you the value of transformation Impartation of knowledge By teaching the principles of the kingdom Chances are that you can be a passionate soul winner And find out that people come You crowd people at the gate of the kingdom But you cannot mature them Because the instruments are portioned for the maturity of the saints You were not equipped with it So he said I will give you pastors after my heart This is why we celebrate pastors 
when you celebrate your man of God and his wife, you are celebrating the sacrifice to be able to bring you the word of God in season. The labor to bend over backwards and receive the dimensions that was not directly committed to them for your sake. The Bible says they watch over your souls. We live in a generation today that is downplaying men of God, downplaying pastors. And I agree, I know that here and there in the body of Christ as it has always been. The body of Christ as the bride of Christ is still growing. And I know that there are all kinds of things all around the world. But that should not mandate our generation is gradually becoming emboldened towards insulting the graces upon people. We do it happily. And we do not know that we are incurring all kinds of causes upon ourselves. There is still the sacredness of priesthood. And it's important that we honor it. Are we together? Anybody can get up today, insult his pastor, insult the woman of God and not care. You can have a minister dance and celebrate God and then you do. And, and the trouble is that it is young people who have not even started anything in life. They've not built anything. They've not raised anybody. We have to be careful. Are we together? It's a pastor's meeting and I say this from the depth of my heart. I love the body of Christ and... At least within the, the, the opportunity God has given, we must call ourselves to order and be careful. Anybody insults fathers of faith, insults anybody. I mean, come on, please. When great people are quiet, you should be quiet too. Because there is something they know and there is something they see that you are not seeing. Young ministers, this is, this is a passionate appeal. We must be careful. Let us not allow our zeal of ministry and the pride that comes with one miracle, one prophecy, one revelation to push us to the edge of our defeat through dishonor. Dishonor has always cost people. God is the ruler of his body. Let him be the one to build and lift people. Your assignment is to find the role you have to play and play it with all your heart. I say it again. I say it again, let us be careful, let us be careful, the things that we say and do to and against men of God, churches, and let us be careful, let us be careful, this is the voice of God, there are things that we do in life that the consequences, by the time you realize you will still have to pay for the consequences. The challenge is that many young people are not students of history. We have not gone back to studying the body of Christ. What happened in the 60s? What happened in the 70s? We are not the first to do this. The Bible says the things that are written are for time. They are for our learning. So that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. One time in a Catherine Kuhlman. Thank you for watching. Like our videos, share and subscribe. Thank you.